On today's episode of Junkin' with Jenny, we retool an old door header with a creative keystone. Also, some interesting ways to use old chairs as art. And what can be done with these old doors? Plus, ideas for this fixer-upper. All that and more on today's episode of Junkin' with Jenny. Here we are. Welcome to Junkin' with Jenny, the show where we talk about taking items in spaces that are ordinary and really giving them a new new life. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Welcome <laughs> to the show. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight on uh, Facebook Live as we do it every single Thursday night at 8 p.m. Central. You can join us for uh, the conversation. If you're listening on the podcast, welcome and thank you for tuning in. Be sure to press subscribe whenever platform it is you are listening to us on that helps us grow the show, helps other people find it. So please and thank you uh, about that. How are you doing this fine day, Jenny? I'm good. How are you? I, um, I- I'm doing well. Um <laughs> no, you're not. I uh, next time we're at a restaurant and I see the uh, the fried chicken on the menu, the the hot fried chicken, the Nashville hot fried chicken. Yeah. Um, I don't know what what needs to be done if there's like intervention, an intervention, a collar, something that can shock me into to going bad idea. I really wanted to order it too. What we should have done is split it. We should have, and because it, it, it was a uh, two big breasts. That sounds horrible. That was really bad. <laughs> Fried chicken breasts. That that sounds better. Yeah, there, yeah. I, I I phrased it correctly. Someone's just going to like grab that little piece of audio, and it's going to be their new ringtone. <laughs> it's going to be Tony going two big. Breasts. That's. And uh, and they were fried, and then they had the uh, the the Nashville hot sauce on them, and I was about. I, I thought I had thoughts of stopping at one. And you ate. And both I did not. I did not. They were this big each. What were they? <laughs> they were huge. <laughs> they were. They were like the Franken chicken. Yeah. Type. Uh, so. Anyway, I'm I'm kind of regretting that now. It was delicious, but mm-hmm. I'm just kind of like, oh my god. So anyhow, so any strange on the noises happy thoughts. Are from you? Yeah, it's uh, it's it's not uh, your computer glitching. It's, it's nobody assumed it was their computer glitching to begin with. <laughs> well, maybe I like to think that sometimes it's like, is, it, is that my podcast player or is that that me? Am I hearing that over through my headphones or uh, over yeah. the headphones? Yeah. And that can happen sometimes. So, uh, so yeah. Uh, today's uh, creative juice we have for you, Nathaniel Rose. Camera's over here. Um, Nathaniel Rose uh, out of uh, Michigan. So we're doing Michigan wines this month. And uh, this is a really, really exciting winemaker. This is a guy who, um, you know, it, 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 it really fits in with us well because uh, he is someone who is taking... Uh, older, forgotten uh, ways of making wine, and he's doing it again. He's bringing it back and showing people how exciting uh, some of these old processes are and sure. were, and how they can still be done today. Yeah, this is a guy who went around um, in the it's in the Traverse City uh, area, just north of there, up there on the peninsula. Um, and he had been a winemaker and a head winemaker at several vineyards over the last nine years or so. Really learned his craft at everything, you know, just first of all, just raising his hand saying, can I help? Can I learn how to do this? Mm-hmm. Slowly worked his way up, working all over the place um, at many uh, vineyards, uh, made an agreement saying, hey, uh, yes, I'll, I'll work here and do this. But I, I do want uh, some of this. I have to be able to, to be able to experiment a little bit on my own here. So if I have a barrel or something, I, I want to at least try to do something uh, of my own to develop. So he's been experimenting for years, got this stuff down to his science, and is recreating uh, winemaking methods from other parts of the world that are, are pretty much extinct, and he's doing it there in Michigan. Yeah. And he's making some extraordinary red wines in Michigan, and we'll talk about some of those on another episode of the program. But uh, the first one I wanted to uh, to showcase from him uh, is is this one, and uh, this is a uh, a Marsan wine, and and what this is, uh, it's called Marsan Orange wine. It doesn't mean it's it doesn't mean orange. 
Although it is a little, little, it's kind of that orange, amber glow. Tinty. It's pretty. It is. It, it almost looks like a really, you know, amberish Chardonnay. You know, mm-hmm. but it, it's not. What what this is? Uh, it's made by fermenting Marsan on the skins all the way to dryness. Uh, traditionally in the northern Rhone area, it was not uncommon to produce wines this way, but it has completely fallen into obscurity. So he's brought it back. He's doing it. This is a process of how you'd make red wine. Mm-hmm. So what you're really getting here is a white wine that kind of tastes like a red. Right. And I never had anything like this. And it's it's very unique. It's very, very good. We're going to cheers. Are we going to? Cheers. Cheers. Yay. But... It's neat. It is. I mean, it's you, very you good. taste it and you're like, it does. You, you, it's just white. You close your eyes and it tastes like you're sipping a red. You could almost do a blind taste test with this. It, and, and really, you can't look at what's in your glass, though, either. Yeah. Um, and, and, and you have to be blindfolded, literally. And, and you could be confused by this. Um, but it, it's really interesting. He practices a lot of historical methods. So I thought his stuff really fit into what we do with taking old things, giving it new life. He's doing the same thing mm-hmm. in the wine world. And he has a whole bunch of amazing wines um, that we're going to be taking a look at uh, on some future episodes here and there. Um, but if, you want, if you're in Michigan and, and you want to go see him north of Traverse City, about two miles north of Sutton's Bay on M22, that's where they are at. Uh, beautiful place to vacation mm-hmm. in summer. In summer, In yes. winter, if you like winter weather, there's good skiing up there. <laughs> but uh, in summer is when I definitely suggest to go. Uh, Nathaniel Rose, uh, the, his uh, website is uh, linked up at uh, junkinwithjenny.com. But if you're ever up there, do check him out. Uh, just exquisite winemaker uh, up there. So I want to thank him for being our creative juice today. Uh, on the show. I get excited about these ones where yeah. it, it's like they really are doing things in the wine world like we're doing in this world. Well, they're as passionate about what they mm-hmm. do as we are about what we do. And so it's a really nice fit. Yeah. I had like an like hour long conversation with him the other day and he was explaining to me how he's doing all this and how he just kind of worked his way up and all of it. And it was just, he's got the passion and that helps me kind of to tell his story. Sure. Um, and just really cool stuff. So anyway, uh, Nathaniel Rose Wine, check that out. Um, okay. On to some of the, uh, the junkin. The old shit. The old shit that we talk about here on the program. <laughs> uh, and by the way, if you have a question for Jenny about uh, any item, space, place, submit it on the website, junkinwithjenny.com. Uh, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, Keystone. And we got uh, some video to show about this yeah. as well. How did we, we came across essentially an uh, old door header at an antique store. It was actually a window header. Oh, okay. But it was just almost the size of our front door, side light and door Mm -hmm. included. So I got it and I was... For not having the exact measurements, I was pretty. Dang you were close. you were close. It was almost it was almost doable. It I mean, was almost doable. It held it, it. Looked like a small hat. Yeah. A too small hat on somebody. It just wasn't quite right. Held it up there. You're know, like, what do you think? Like, I could. I'd be okay. You're like, no, it won't work. <laughs> It's got to be right or it's going to bug me. Which I'm not sure why you even ask me my opinion on, on things like that sometimes. Because you already know it's going to be like, no! I don't know. I just do. <laughs> but uh, we got it up there like, yeah, but what are we going to use it on now? Because that was the original thought was right in our front entryway. And you can use old window and door headers mm-hmm. for a lot of things. They make um, a great place to install hooks and then hang by a door for mm-hmm. hanging coats or whatever i mean there's a lot of different things to do with it but i wanted a substantial door header for our front door because it just had just kind of the real dinky trim that was on all the rest of the doors and i wanted something that was more substantial Mm -hmm. so had it there what do we do doesn't fit went in the garage where all things go to wait for (laughs) another idea for another idea yeah so the idea did not come until uh, my uncle Jeff. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were in town visiting, and and he's a, a, a woodworker. Yes. Is, is that the like real deal woodworker? Yeah. Yes. Uh, and and his dad, uh, my grandpa was uh, as well. So he learned a lot of the craft from him, and now he carries it on. And uh, you were having a blast just talk, talking the, shop. The we whole... spoke the same language. <laughs> yeah. It was. 
you know, I didn't have to Google and show a picture because he mm-hmm. knew what I was talking about, mm-hmm. where sometimes I have to show you pictures, and that's okay. But, sure. But he was the one. I showed him this great header that we found, and I was like, I don't know what to do with it now. Mm-hmm. I really wanted to use it on the front door, and he had the idea of a keystone, which we'll show you what that is, or and we can describe it. It's a almost a raised and wider piece in the center. It's a center mm-hmm. stone or stone type item. Mm-hmm. And we used wood. Yeah. Um, and really what it does, it, it's just kind of your, I guess your crown jewel and your header for lack of a better term. Mm-hmm. And, and what we did with it was uh, basically put it into the middle of the, of the header. Of the header. And that expanded it. We, we cut it down some, but yet made it to where it expanded this header enough to where it would now fit over the door. And so, you know, if you were just to cut it in half and stick a keystone in there, it's going to be way too big. So it took quite a bit of math and figuring out and then finding the, the right item to make this keystone out of. And there was no real way I felt confident we were going to match what we had going on. And I planned Mm -hmm. on painting the header anyway, because all of our trim's white. Uh, So we just went completely opposite end of the spectrum and did a real rustic barnwood keystone Mm -hmm. on this kind of semi-ornate white Mm -hmm. header. And I love how it turned out. Mm -hmm. I think it was great. It really, it was a great way to make something like that work. Yeah. When when you think it won't. And it was such a great idea because on the outside of our house, the window trim has keystones. So I'm like, why didn't I think of that? But it it took (laughs) Uncle Jeff... He did it. Teaching us. Yeah. And he helped us the whole way. Yeah. And he's got a gazillion tools, which are awesome. Yeah. And tools that we don't even have. But there, there are like workarounds for a lot of it if you don't have some of the mm-hmm. tools. Um, but the video we're going to show you is us in his shop in Wisconsin. Uh, we did it over Christmas uh, break. Yeah. We hauled the header up there and worked yeah. on it. It was fun. And uh, here is uh, how we did it <laughs> with him uh, in, uh, in his shop. This is our header project. Check it out. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make a rustic keystone with an antique door header. We found this beautiful antique door header, but it wasn't quite the right size for our door. So what do we do? My uncle Jeff suggested we make it the right size by extending it out a little bit with a keystone. He had this great piece of barn wood in his shop that we were able to work with. First things first, to create that keystone for extending the header, we planed it down so that the pieces would fit flush together on the sides that are not going to be visible. Then we had to make our templates for cutting into that rustic piece of barn wood to make sure that it all fit together correctly. So we took some scrap wood, measured it out, and then got ready to cut the pieces out. Once we had them cut out, put them all together, made sure everything fit and was flush together. And then, of course, to keep them together, you need something like a biscuit jointer to uh, help keep those pieces in place. Once the biscuits are there, we simply glued it together. Then we added in some extra screws just to make sure that over the years, this keystone, in fact, stays one piece. After that, it's time to cut at an angle into your header and the corresponding angle of your keystone. Make sure that you do this correctly and measure it correctly. Otherwise, you're going to have one big mess. Put it together. Make sure that it all corresponds correctly and all fits the puzzle nicely. After that, it is time to affix it. We are doing some pocket holes here and using a crag jig to affix the keystone to the header itself. Once it's all together, there you go. Header and keystone. Then it's up to you how you want this thing to have a finished look. We painted ours to match the trim and the feel of our entryway. We kept the keystone with the rustic barnwood look and feel. Love that. Makes a great statement in the entryway for many years to come. For more home ideas and tips, check out junkinwithjenny.com and subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or wherever podcasts are downloaded. So that's how it was done. That is how it was done. And, you know, I personally love the mix of rustic with kind of more refined Mm -hmm. things. So to me, that was my perfect, you know, 
end product for the header, but yeah. you know you could do that any kind of way. It's it's just one of those outside the box ideas to solve a problem, and mm -hmm. you know you can make it all match, or you can do it you know kind of contrasting like we did, mm -hmm. but. Keep it in mind, if you ever come across an old header and you're not real sure if it's going to fit, there's ways to work around that. There is definitely ways to make it work. Uh, fun project. Uh, yeah. we, and we did look at a lot of different types of wood for that, but when we saw that that uh, old barn wood, it was mm -hmm. like, nope, this is it. He's like, let me show you this one, guys. Oh, we had tons of options. all kinds of options, like, but it was this real rustic barn wood yeah. piece with all these knots and i was like that's our wood that's just, our yeah. piece you just know it right away <laughs> yeah so it was a very cool piece uh, you can see that video again up on our website chunking with jenny.com if you want to watch it uh so check that out um let's go to another uh, item okay. uh, let's go actually there's another there's a, an interesting piece of decor that you put together uh this last week maybe it was a previous week it was one of these weeks uh -huh. um and, and we'll we'll go to that one in just a minute first let's go over to uh a listener submitted, uh, let's do an item okay. that was sent in that uh, somebody wants some ideas or advice on. Let's pick this right here. And uh, what do we have here, Jenny? These just look like old stained glass windows. And the way they're so ornate, my guess would be they came from obviously an older home, but they were probably positioned above the window that you would actually use to view out. You know how mm -hmm. they have smaller transom windows yeah. over the windows where you view out. I'm guessing that's what those were. That or they were some sort of accent window someplace. Sure. But because there's two and they're just alike, I would venture to guess there was probably three and they were probably in a row above a larger window. Mm -hmm. So these would be kind of, because I was thinking transom-ish. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. In, in their original form. I can almost picture these, you know, in some of the, the older homes, the staircases where it would be like a two two level staircase uh -huh. where you go around, you know, the corner on that little, the platform. And then there's a lot of, I'm thinking the older homes, the ornate windows that tend to be there. In craftsman homes, mm -hmm. a lot of times you go up, you know, half a flight of stairs, you have a landing, you turn 90 degrees and go up the other half. Yeah. And a lot of times in that landing, you'd have some sort of stained glass window mm -hmm. like this. Sure. And I could see that being there as well. Sure. So they are kind of oddly shaped. They are. They're a little bit narrow to use as a transom over a doorway. Mm -hmm. um, and because they're a little bit odd, you'd either have to cut in a specific spot for them, either on an interior wall or... You know, an exterior wall, I wouldn't probably use them just with this glass. I would probably put extra glass in them. How so? I would do it almost like a storm window. So you have like an extra layer attached. To protect the glass, to protect the stained glass? Protect the stained glass, but also for uh, draft protection. Okay, you know, yeah. To give it a little more insulation. But... I, you know, hang them in a spot where they're going to catch light. Mm -hmm. And you can easily just suspend them on a wall as well. Mm -hmm. I just think they're really neat. And they are pretty even without the light. I, I the, the thing is, unless you're going to cut in somewhere and have a good spot for them, it, it'd be difficult with these. There's not a whole lot I would do is saying, you know, take the glass out and, say, and use the frame. Or I, no. I, I, I would use it as is. Yeah. But I think I would hang them, but I would do some sort of you know, some of the tiny, tiny LED lights behind it mm -hmm. to mimic the sunlight sure. somewhat so you can still get the glow out of it. And it almost would be kind of like a, this could be an interesting wall light, almost like a night light. Like at the end of a hallway yeah. or something. That would be neat. Where, you know, late at night, all the other lights are off, but there's, instead of just the little light in the by the outlet that's plugged in that mm -hmm. comes on, this could be a really interesting way of having like a night light in your house. It has some, you know, depth to it. I've also seen it to where you can attach chain to these with uh, hook and eye hardware mm -hmm. and hang them in front of an existing window as kind of almost a window treatment. Okay. So if you had a small enough window or even if it was, you know, the right width to hang them side by side, you can hang them towards the top and they kind of catch the light. Mm -hmm. um, just almost like a balance. Sure. Sure. Uh, Charlene had the exact same idea I had, and, and I think she, she typed it, and it posted up there before the feed caught up to me okay. saying it. 
on the feed. She goes, ha ha, just said that, Tony. Um, so uh, Charlene, thank you for that. Um, and Maria says hello from Sweden. Oh, so wow. we have hello. we have some Swedish folks listening this evening. That's awesome. Welcome. And you guys join in the conversation here on uh, on Facebook as we do this live and weigh in with your ideas. I'm checking it as we go. So if you have ideas uh, for uh, any of the uh, objects or spaces that we're talking about tonight, uh, love to see them. And uh, we'll uh, we'll weigh in here uh, as we go through the episode. OK, let's go over to this uh, object. Uh, this is one you made. Yeah. And. Take a look at that. Okay, so we have to describe it yes. for our listeners. These are antique folding chairs that are made of wood. They are not the square ones that almost look like miniature deck chairs. These are actually, they have the curved top and curved seat. So when you hang them, they, you know, they have a very rounded top and come down straight rectangular. And they're just old wood and they weren't painted or anything. And what I did was I hung them on the wall because I wanted um, some sort of interesting piece to fill in this gap between two doors. And I didn't want to just go find a large piece of artwork. I thought, what can I do that's going to add some dimension? And I like hanging wood items on the wall because I like the warmth that the wood tones give. Um, but I thought, you know, we could actually layer items. That's another thing I like to do is take old things and layer them if possible. So hung these chairs on some neat hooks. They're not old. They look old, but um, hung them three in a row. And then I found uh, at the, actually it was at the thr thrift shop, some old sheet music and framed it in some you know, really inexpensive frames that I found and hung those frames on chain and also hung that from the hook. So the picture frame with the sheet music on the chain hangs where the folded seat part hangs on the chair. Mm -hmm. Is that a decent description? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, we found these chairs when we were antiquing with your mom up in Wisconsin. And mm -hmm. I just, I thought they were so neat because I don't usually... I've not seen the rounded back ones like this. So they almost look like the metal ones that everybody had for setting up around a card table, but they're old and, and they're, they're wood. wood. Yeah. And my guess is they're, you know, probably from around the forties or fifties. Mm -hmm. Uh, cause they're, they're newer than the square backed ones. Sure. But they fold up so flat that they worked great for hanging on the wall. And then I just thought the sheet music would be fun. And you know, my girls, they like to sing, you say potato, I say potato. And I happened to find that piece of music, and it's in one of those frames. Really? Yeah. I never looked at what the music was in yeah. the frames. There's a couple pieces of Beethoven, but then one of them is You Say Potato, I Say Potato. I think it's called Let's Call the Whole Thing Off. Uh -huh. But I thought it was fun. It would have been really interesting if you would have found just like 1990s light rock sheet music yeah. and put it in there. <laughs> and it's like, it's Michael Bolton said, I loved you, but I lied. And uh, Lionel Richie and... Uh, who else could we put in there? I don't know. I this was <laughs> I'm sure this was with a whole pile of some little old lady's organ music, I'm sure. And mm -hmm. I just got it for like a, you know, a dollar a booklet. Sure. And and, and it's aged and it looks yeah. appropriate. Yeah. Although I suppose 90s sheet music would look appropriate too. If not, there's ways to make it look old and we can talk mm -hmm. about that sometime. I actually one time I I actually bought a book of sheet music. Mm -hmm. Uh when I bought a keyboard I don't know how to play a keyboard. <laughs> I, I I could read music if I sit there and 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 study it and then write out what the the notes Tap are. It out. Uh, but but I, uh, I I can't like just fluently read music. I, I I could do it for a short period of time. I think in like fifth grade, and then that went away. Um, but uh, I, I I once bought a keyboard thinking I'm going to teach myself how to play this keyboard. It was like a I was like 18, mm -hmm. 18. I moved out. I was living by myself in There's my apartment. And I thought, I'm going to teach. That never happened. Aww. I did. I liked the the little drum sound effects, though, on the keyboard. And I would sit there and I'd, I'd play those as I listened to music in my apartment by myself with my cat. That's this is, sad. This is the stuff. That's <laughs> this sad. is the stuff that 18-year-old guys do, I think. Okay. I think. I, I don't know. No. <laughs> no, it's not. No. Okay. I'm guessing not. Okay. Well, you never know. It's, it's what I did. <laughs> okay. 
So anyway, that's um, I, I love those chairs. They are. I, I want to say I've seen them like in um, old halls, like wedding halls, because sure. you know with, with DJing weddings and crap like that back in those days. Um, I want to say I'd seen things like that in some of the very old, like the Knights of Columbus sure. or um, Lions Club and things of that nature. Um, but these ones. Did you ever try sitting on any of these, or were just kind of no. like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take the risk. I, I did not want to break it because I had three. I didn't have four, and I thought I don't have one to chance. If you know the combination of its age and my, you know, mm-hmm. adult self sitting on it caused it to crack, and <laughs> I didn't want to ruin it. Don't want to go down that road no, with it because I knew. I, I like using groups of three or five odd numbers, so I knew three was going to have to make it on the wall. Mm-hmm. Uh, it says, for the chairs uh, hanging on the wall, I have a second idea, Kelly says. You could create a new counter, almost like a bar in the kitchen dining room area. Take off the handle part and cut them and uh, uh, cut them, and puzzle them together to make an almost counter-like thing, maybe. Just a thought. Yeah, I could see that. I'm trying to picture that, how that would work. Um, well, you kind of, you take the back off and you have the seat folded down. So it's, instead of a mm-hmm. shelf, you put the three together and you make it okay. kind of almost a counter. I've seen them uh, hanging open on the wall as well for like a nightstand mm-hmm. that's up off the floor. Okay. Okay. That would be, uh, that would be interesting. These were numbered on the back, so I'm yeah. not sure what they were for. And I thought, okay, what's the worst that their history could be? Persistent funerals. I thought that, or I thought, you know, a prison execution viewing room. <laughs> yeah. I, you, I was like... You, you really did take it to another. I was like, I don't think these have a bad past life, and hopefully they're not haunted, but I really liked them. So they came home, and they're on my wall now. It is interesting. Sometimes when you walk in the room, they shake. And they the, don't. the house is not rattling at all. They it's don't. just like... It's no. Like, that's odd. Not at all. <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> Yet. Uh, so there you go. Those are uh, some interesting uh, things we did with the uh, the old antique chairs. You can see the pictures at junkinwithjenny.com. And uh, thank you, Kelly, for weighing in with that uh, that idea on uh, what to do with that. Um, what do you say? Item? Sure. Let, let's go to Let's go to these. And these... Kind of remind me of the uh, the long. What do we have up the the giant in our our formal living area next to the window? Shutters. The giant shutters. Yeah. But they're not. No. But they're, they're not. in the. They're an iron gate set. It looks like. Mm-hmm. Um, they either went on a window or on a metal fence, and they're probably well. They look to be taller than us. They, they go all the way to the top of the garage door there. Mm-hmm. So they're probably seven, seven and a half feet tall. But um, they're mirrored e- of each other. They're probably 18 inches wide. Mm-hmm. And they're cool. They're rusty. And they're just these neat iron gate panels. And I could do a bajillion different things with them. But the idea I thought I would do with them if I had them at my house was I would somehow affix them on a deck or in an outside area and use them for growing plants on them. Like as like a trellis? Almost like a trellis. Okay. Yes. Either, you know, get some kind of vine going on it or you could even affix some planters to it. I could see that. I could see that. I could even see it almost being the entry point to uh, like an outdoor, like a, a a defined garden area. Sure. You know how a lot of people, uh, my, my mom, she has the, uh, what is the... It's an arbor. The arbor that, mm-hmm. that you walk through. Although you're not allowed to walk through that one anymore. It's been kind of grown over and whatnot. Yeah. And then there's like flowers within it. But I could see it like literally being kind of the focal entry point into a garden. I like the idea of letting some things kind of grow up on it. And they're metal and you put them outside. I would, I would spray something on these to... Uh, uh, slow the deterioration process uh-huh. of them outside to give it more life because I, I think it really could get uh, rusted out pretty quick if you just leave them out there. 
And if you keep up on that, I think you can get a, a lot of years uh, out of it, probably like a Rust-Oleum product of some sort. Yeah, you can clear coat it with a mm-hmm. Rust-Oleum product. I um, wouldn't paint them. I wouldn't no. change the color or keep them as is. You know, obviously they're they're neat hanging on a wall. You can flank a window with them. There's mm-hmm. a lot of different things. You could even make an arbor out of them. If you sure. put a top of some sort out of iron across mm-hmm. it, and if you had any welding skills, which I do not, nor do mm-hmm. I have any welding tools, but you could make an arbor out of it as well. Where do you think these things were originally used? What were they? What's your best guess? I have really no idea. It depends on, the, I'm going to say actually it kind of depends on the part of the country where it yeah. came from. Um, you know, some some mansions and estates have these large iron fences and they have gates like this. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. And I don't know if they're just super rusted or if they actually are old. It's really hard to tell. Sherry says she thinks they look like they might have been used in a bank. That's a very good I could possibility. See that. Like, I could see that. On yeah. the end? Sure, sure. I, I could very much see that, and that's that's interesting. That it's, it, it, there's a neat, creepy aspect of these things uh, that that I, I really love. So there's uh, there's that item. Jay has a comment on our previous item of of what the chairs may have been used for. If this is gonna freak me out, Jay, I don't really want to. And do I had to chuckle a little bit when I, I saw you it. chuckle. <laughs> so I'm just like, yeah, that's a fun one. The chairs could have been used. Okay, you ready for it? Am I going to take the chairs down after the show? I don't think so. Okay. I think it just gives them a more more spirit, if you will. Could have been used. Uh, maybe somebody used them as they stepped off of them when they were hanging themselves. No. That's what Jay says. Thank Someone you, Jay. Someone stood up before they hung themselves. Appreciate that. That's horrible. Appreciate Let's put that. all the horrible ideas in Jenny's mind of what... The antiques that she so dearly loves. I still think my execution viewing room chairs were better than that. <laughs> execute, you know that that I think would almost hold more chances of having energy just because of uh, if you're the viewing room does does <laughs> forgive my lack of knowledge on the topic okay. of, of 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 the the procedure for. For viewing a uh, uh, set event of, of an execution, uh, I've never viewed one either. Don't go mm-hmm. saying it like I might know. <laughs> it's like in the weekends we used to go to the prison and watch the executions. No, the extent of my knowledge on the topic is watching the Green Mile. So okay, that's I don't all know if I it was know. like a Texas weekend thing. <laughs> right, we shoot armadillos and we go watch executions. That's that's how we roll. That's what I want to take as a ringtone right okay. there. We shoot armadillos and we watch executions. That would be an interesting, uh, like, welcome to insert town here sign, but it's like in a nice pretty cursive letter, lettering kind of like slanted. <laughs> With a family. With a family? Just, you know, it's just such an insane phrase to have posted. Um, no, and I don't mean that, um, but... <laughs> Well, I, I kind of yeah, do. do. I kind of do. But um, who who views them? I mean, does is it does the family go and view that if it's most of the time the victims it, of the the family of the victims to okay to, okay or get, okay. possibly the family of the person okay but it's that final closure okay I get okay I, I wasn't thinking that I don't that know makes that sense. that's done anymore okay I don't honestly know that it's not like pay per view you know it's no. No, and no. my apologies if somebody's gotten, you know, had had to, to had go to through deal that. With that. Sure, yeah, sure. But I'm just trying to think of where these numbered chairs might have been, and that was the worst thought I could have. How many numbers? What numbers are on the I chairs? I don't know. Is there, it like in the it's hundreds? It's not six, 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 or anything like that. Is it in the hundreds, or is no, it like thirty six, thirty seven, thirty six, twenty five? So it could have been a fairly small, small gathering, yeah. or whatever it. It may have been. Kelly says that's exactly how you're supposed to spend a weekend. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. Uh, I think the chairs were used in the band section of a school. Oh, that I love. And that makes perfect sense with the music, the sheet music. It does. We're going to go with that. Ding, ding, ding. You win. My mom made you feel better. Yay. Thank you. There you go. Or a theater. Okay. I like that too, except theaters are kind of haunted. But I like the band section mm-hmm. of school. Yeah, 
I like that. That makes it feel a little more special. Yay. You went from execution room to... Uh, I feel much better now. Suicide uh, assist to... Uh, nope. Okay, well, there you go. Um, I'm sure we'll have more ideas on what the chairs are used for after our next item uh, as people continue to weigh in on that. How about this thing? Is this, is this an old mailbox? What is this? I don't really know. It almost, you know, the way the top tilts up, it looks like some kind of drafting table. But yeah, maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's where you put the, some of the drafting the plans? plans. Yeah. Okay, I could see that. I, I've just... Never seen one like that, but it's neat. Mm -hmm. It's really neat. It's a big uh, green. It, I mean, it, it, it's it's it has a drafting top. It's almost reminiscent of like a podium, uh, a little bit wider. Sure. Uh, and then you have all these slots that are reminiscent of like an old you know mailbox, but they're pretty small. Um, so I'm thinking that might be where you scroll up the the drafting plan mm -hmm. into a tight roll and put it in there. That's what we're looking at. Yeah. And you know, I'm wondering if that top can flatten down because mm -hmm. I don't know how much use I'm going to get out of it as a drafting table or anything that's going to need to be tilted up. So if I could lay that top down, then you can use it for a variety of different things or take the top off completely and just keep the little part that's mm -hmm. got all the little mailbox cubbies. I think you could totally use it like in your house as like a, a podium to uh, deliver speeches to the kids. Family meetings. Well, in, instead of like, let's sit down and hug it out and stuff, it's more like everybody sits on the numbered chairs in front of the podium, and then you go up there, and and you you know you do a lot of this. Your arms are flailing around. And I'm not saying you do it. I'm saying this is what you should do. Oh, I thought and you were telling me I flail. No, no, but I'm saying this because you need to really make an impact and and be very dramatic in speeches like that behind a podium. Mm -hmm. So I think that could really be. It could be really effective if, if you use How it as a family dictator table. How tall do you think it is? Because that is a big factor in yeah. what you can use it for. I don't think it's quite podium height. I think it's, I don't know, uh, three feet, four feet. So it could, in theory, be like a kitchen island then if you had a flat top. I think if you took that the, the drafting table top on it mm -hmm. off, yeah, I think you got a, an okay island height there use that i love the green i mm -hmm. don't think i'd paint it yeah it's fun i would put it on casters yeah and do the island thing because i think you may need a little bit more height on it and i think if you did some casters with wheels mm -hmm. that might just give you the extra little notch of height that or you know if it is too tall with mm -hmm. casters that looks like you can cut the feet slightly sure if it's it looks to be made out of wood if it's wood then yes you could do that would you keep all the drafting uh, notches and holes in there that, I mean, I, I'm trying to think of a practical use for it. It's kind of neat, mm -hmm. but if you're going to turn this into a practical use thing, I don't know what, you know, what kitchen application that would be unless you have a lot of tiny rolling pins, well, like 400. Yeah, and the thing is, I don't know if you could put spices in there or if you could put kitchen utensils with the handle part going mm -hmm. in. It's Some, been, it's I mean, kind of awkward it is that. awkward. I mean, I could see a couple going in there. You know, I, I maybe keep, I, I would test that out, see what what would work in there, and maybe keep one or two rows of that, if that makes sense. But I don't think you'd have enough to fit that. Because there's literally, if you count the all the holes, they probably got like at least 100, 200. Sure. Well, and you know what? It looks like from the side view, you can see that there's basically three shelves to it. Mm-hmm. It just has these little cubbies. I wonder if you could remove the cubbies as a unit, mm -hmm. hang that on the wall, and use that to hold spice jars. Yes, mobile spice cabinet is what a listener says. And I can see those tiny holes would work well for the tiny mm -hmm. the tiny spice things. Yeah. And if you keep them all facing out, you can see exactly what you got. You could be really methodical and do it alphabetically and then be really pissed off when somebody puts... The, the cardamom where the uh, the marjoram should be going. Okay. You know. And the new spice rack that I'm going to build you, I'm not even going to bother to alphabetize because I know you won't put it back that way. I was hoping you would. No. If you want it alphabetized, you alphabetize it. I was hoping you'd, you'd just do it like in terms uh, maybe uh, of, of your favorite flavors. Uh, just go down the line and then I'll know what 
what your favorite spices are. Do you know the names of no, many I don't. spices? Can I you don't. name like? I can name spices. Other than basil and I can name spices. It's oregano. just you do most of the cooking, so five spices go. I don't know what those five spices. No name oh. five. <laughs> I thought you meant like one like of the... Chinese five spice. Yeah. No, no, I just meant like just name five spices. Okay. And you can't Chinese five spices out. Like cayenne pepper, cinnamon, nutmeg, coriander, uh, clove. Ten. I'm not going to name ten. We got other. I'm going to keep to raising the bar. No. I'm moving the field goal back just a little bit every time. I don't know what all you put in our food, but it's good, so I'm not going to complain. <laughs> that sounds really bad. It's like, I don't know what the hell you put in this food, but it's it's great. I did see a story, uh, a news story earlier today where um, I don't know where it was. I did read where it was, but I don't recall it. I don't know if it was Florida or where it was, but um, a child uh, took mom and dad's uh, uh, pot gummy bears, the edibles, thinking they were gummy bears, yeah, uh, and and snuck them to school, not knowing they were pot. Just, just thinking, oh, gummy bears, I'm going to share these with my friends. And it turns out, like, got a whole classroom high as a kite. <laughs> and they're like, what happened? They, and they traced it back to what it was. And the, the poor kid, yeah. you know, and, and the, I, from what I, I think the parents got it, you know, with whatever might have been a state sure. where it's completely legal or they had whatever to get it. But uh, there you go. I hope the kids will be kids. I hope the kid wasn't expelled for yeah. bringing drugs or something because they're not going to know. No, no, no. Old Spice is Spice Girl, Sugar and Spice. That's what uh, <laughs> Jay says. Okay. So, there you go. Spice Girls. Name the no, Spice Girls. I know you can, but I can't. I don't know the Spice Girls very well. By their their real names or by their their Spice Girl names where it's like Sporty Spice? I don't know. And... I don't know. It was... You know, that was like your era. That when, when the it, Spice Girls were big, that was... You were a, a, a young girl, a teen girl at the time that... Uh, demographically, you, you should have been a big fan. I should have been a big fan demographically. <laughs> yes. I should have been a big fan of Hanson as well, but I'm not. <laughs> there you go. So there Same you go. thing. There you go. Okay. But, uh, okay. I'll let you think about that one if you want. You can come back and we can play Name the Spice Girls again in a little bit. Okay. Just just in case. Okay. Just just let me know. Uh, let's do this item. Let's do a, let's do a, a, a house. Let's do a place. Okay. Nice, old, rustic home, wood, siding. You you give the description here. Okay. It looks like kind of a small craftsman bungalow style. Mm -hmm. So it's one level, and it's got a porch on it, and the rafters show and everything, and it's got a railing. But it looks like it's pretty sad. I think the first thing I would do would be figure out if the siding is still okay or if it just needs to be painted. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would look at the roof because this, this house has got some, you know, some age going on. So I think, first of all, you want to get structurally where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. It almost looks kind of like, uh, <laughs> almost like it's, it's, it's. Starting to, to tilt in two different directions. And I can't tell if that's just the angle of the picture yeah. or what. Yeah. Uh, the porch is sagging a little bit, and I think I would just work on those things first. But if it's all fine and dandy and just needs to be made pretty, I would really lighten it up and then do maybe some dark trim on it and... All the little accents, like the railing and the ends of the rafters on the porch and things like that, mm -hmm. make those dark so they really pop against the light sure. siding. I would consider, you know, the thing is there's the power right there on the front. I was going to say I would consider shutters, but you aren't going to be able to put two shutters yeah, you get the there. power stuff all right there. Right. But you could do a window box, mm -hmm. and that would really dress it up. And you could even add some trim to that window to beef it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. A window box would be nice. I think I'd put something there in front of the uh, where the, the power boxes are. 
Mm-hmm. I don't know what the restrictions are, Samari. I mean, and I can't tell if it's like a metered box where somebody has to go see it. It doesn't quite look like it. It looks just more like a, this is a access to power. Yeah. Um, I would probably just do some sort of greenery there to, to really just hide it because there's no way you can, I mean, moving it would probably be quite expensive if you can at all. Um, but I would probably just try and hide it if it's not something that needs to be accessible by you public utilities. They have these lattice panels and you i'm not talking the floppy plastic lattice that Mm -hmm. you have to screw into something but there's there's basically posts with lattice in between Mm -hmm. and you could easily mount that kind of out away from it but in front of it to where from the front view Mm -hmm. you know even the side a little bit you don't see that it's kind of obscured and you know start some kind of climbing plant on Mm -hmm. that and make it match the trim of the house so it looks like it's intentional what color would you paint the house? I would, yeah, I, honestly, I would lighten it up to probably like a cream or light gray, but I would go dark with the trim and the accents. Can you ship lap on the outside of a house? No. I mean, or, or, or that's what, siding. That's what siding is for. I, I know, but like, can you do siding that looks like a ship lap in that, that sort of a style? Why would you want to? I don't know. I just, I mean, this almost kind of has that look to it. It's very old siding. Yeah. It, it, it has, an, it, what I'm saying is I like this siding. If it's keepable, I, I would keep it. If not, I would, I would try and go back with something very similar because I think it really reflects the, the age of the house sure. and, and the feel of what the house is. Um, color wise on this, I think I would probably, I would go kind of reddish. I think, and I, I know we had a red house once, but I we think... We had red house with yellow trim. It, was it looked like a McDonald's. McDonald's. Some people actually came to the the, ba- the bedroom no. window thinking it was a drive through no. Like, can I get the dollar menu item, please? Southern chicken sandwich, extra pickles. It was cute, but it was ketchup and mustard. So I'm, I'm, I'm in the, the shower, ma'am. I'm sorry. Um, but... Um, it, you know... I don't think I'd go as ketchupy as that house. But I would maybe go kind of a rusty You could go red. With some of those rich kind of, mm-hmm. you know, nineteen thirties colors that would have been popular when the house was probably built. I would make it feel like a little red and I don't want to say log cabin, like on the side of a syrup bottle, but <laughs> I would go in that area, in that direction. Um, it's not like really a cabin. It's more, you know, I, I, that would be kind of neat. Another thing this house does kind of have the feel for would almost be New Englandy type style. Um, maybe like a, a bluish uh, tone to it, a lighter blue, mm-hmm. uh, a French blue, uh, something of that nature. And more a Cape Cod type Yeah, Cape feel. Cod type feel to it. You could easily, with the way this roof is pitched in the front, you could take from where the roof starts all the way across that line visually from that point up Mm -hmm. to the to the roof Mm -hmm. does that make any sense at all say it again okay so the roof is pitched so basically from the end of the roof on one side of the house draw a line all the way across Mm -hmm. basically where your ceiling is from that line forward or up, I would actually do a different kind of siding just to accent it and okay. add some add some interest. Like you could do shaker shingles or like Cape Cod shingles mm-hmm. on that and then have the siding below. Okay. Do you know what I'm talking about? I think so. Okay. Just do something. It kind of looks like that's done a little bit on the porch. If you mm-hmm. look at the porch closely, you can see that there's a couple of different types of siding going on there. Casey says tin roof. Does she mean this, this is a tin roof or let's put a tin roof on I it? I would totally put a tin roof on it if it made sense where it is. Rusted. <laughs> love sh- <laughs> No, I would. I love tin roofs. I'm from Texas and that's a huge thing down there. But, yeah. um, you know, it doesn't make sense everywhere. But if, if that's a possibility and they need a new roof anyway, I would look at that. Red tin roof and trim gray siding. I would go with the bluish siding with the the tin roof. I don't know that I would go with red on the roof because I think I'm going to get tired of the red before that roof wears out because those last and last and last. That's true. And people could confuse it for a red roof inn. No. Which you don't want, just like they had confused our house for a McDonald's. How about a Pizza Hut? 
A Pizza Hut, yes. We had, that was last week. There was a, a house on, on the show that did have the red roof. Yeah. And we did comment, it kind of, or somebody commented it looked like a uh, old uh, uh, Pizza Hut. Mm-hmm. So, all right. Tin Roof is getting a lot of good votes there. It also needs some landscaping. There's yep. there's really nothing going on. Um, Less garbage cans. Yeah, the, the garbage yard. can probably shouldn't be out front. And I say that as I know ours is sitting right in front of the garage. <laughs> And we're going to get a nasty note about it, but uh, yeah. yeah, that should probably be yeah. in a spot somewhere else. Find its home. Uh, let's go to this item, and this is a fun one. This is a beautiful old uh, fireplace mantle with a, a mirror on top. You didn't send this one to me. Yes, I did. No, I didn't get this one. I apologize. I love this. Yeah, this uh, this is uh, you know. Why don't you? Do, you're best at des- you're good at describe. You're gooder at describing these things. Okay, it's an old oak mantle that's it's basically a double mantle. So you've got your your square bottom, but then you also have the columns go up higher, mm-hmm. and there's almost like a second mantle above that's got a mirror between where the first mantle and the second mantle Mm -hmm. are. And I love these. I love old mantles because you can make any room have a fireplace, if you will. Sure. Um, If you find the right insert, you can use it anywhere. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to put an insert. Something like this is so pretty. It's almost a piece of furniture in itself, and you could just put it against the wall and then have candles in the front, you know, Mm -hmm. or battery candles where you would normally have the fire. Mm -hmm. But I love that. I wouldn't paint it. I wouldn't alter it in any way. I would just use it as is. What about the mirror? The mirror, me personally, I would get a different mirror just because old mirrors creep me out. But there's nothing wrong with it. So if Mm -hmm. that doesn't bother you, don't mess with it. Every once in a while, a little girl shows up in the mirror. But other than that, it, it works fine. Well, could it be one of the two that we have here? Somebody actually earlier on the show said, who's the little girl standing in your window? Yeah, well. We, behind us. I think one of them came down. It could have been <laughs> one of ours. Yeah, but one I, of two. I thought, wouldn't it be creepy, though, after the show we go check and go, who came down? And both of them are like, Neither of us. Yeah, they're going to say that anyway. They're not going to fess up. But we have it on video. <laughs> so We'll go back and figure it out. We can go take a look at the video. Yeah. <laughs> but wouldn't it be creepy, though, if it didn't look like either of them? Anyway, Chair. this isn't the ghost show. Chair this numbers. This is with Jenny. So. <laughs> Casey says mirror equals ghosts. Yeah. So... Can, what if you were to alter the mirror? What if you were to like fog the mirror or or do something where it's not really mirror like anymore, where it's not functioning as a mirror, but the glass is there, but it's you know. You could you could do that, but I know that that is probably an easy fix. It's probably affixed with some screws and some brackets on sure. the back. Sure. So I would just take it out and get either a new mirror or make a mirror. You can put a piece of glass in there that you have cut at the hardware store and then you spray it with the mirror spray. I guess my question is, does it change the superstition if you alter the mirror? I don't know. If you made like a chalkboard out of it. I'm not saying you would do a chalkboard. Well, that would be kind of interesting depending on where this is in a house. I wouldn't put a chalkboard. Just no. because I don't want anybody getting that close to the, the wood and the fireplace drawing and it. <laughs> knocking stuff sure. off that's on the mantle. Let's play stand in front of the heat and draw pictures. Right. Yeah, that might not work out very well. Um, chalkboard paint um, mm-hmm. uh, was suggested for the uh, the mirror. Okay, since we're on the topic of fireplaces, we have another fireplace in this picture. Uh, a little bit grainy, but uh, it's, it's that old 19, what is this, 1970s, 70s. 80s rock? 70s, 80s rock. Yeah. yeah, it's flagstone that's all in its natural state. And the thing is, it's just so dated. Uh huh. Um, is it salvageable? I guess would be my question. With this sort of a, a stone, can you do anything with it? Yes. Okay. Okay, you can flat out paint it if you want. Um, what I would do is I would look at ways to make it look like it's limestone which you can do that with paint but it's not just let's paint it white sure you find 
paint that's in the tones of the limestone that you happen to like you do one coat that basically covers all the stones but then you mm -hmm. go back and you know you pick a handful of stones in certain spots and you you know kind of dab on mm -hmm. different tones to make it look more like limestone i've seen fireplaces that were exactly like this done and they look like cream limestone from texas and you would never know the difference really yeah so it's definitely a fixable thing it just takes some time and you would think faux painting sounds kind of scary, but it's not at all. It's very mm -hmm. easy, user-friendly, and it's one of those things, if you hate the way it turns out, just keep working with it till you get it just right. Mm -hmm. Other than that, this mantle, um, I would beef it up. And I wouldn't even really remove the one that's there. I would build a mantle that slides over it and screws into that because it looks like that one was original and so it's you know kind of built in, in the rock yeah. so i would build a box beam to slide over this and screw oh. it in from the top almost go in like directly on top with that you could actually build it in place yeah i would essentially use the new mantle as mm -hmm. a cleat or use the old mantle as kind of like a cleat yeah that's a great idea that way you, you already because half of the battle with something like that is just getting it fixed mm -hmm. and you already got that part done it's just now making the box around it and you, you could almost do that very much like how we had done some of the faux beams yeah exactly. uh, if you wanted to um which faux beams would have been one episode two episodes back Couple. three episodes back two or three there's a faux beam episode if you want to see how we did that uh junkin with jenny.com casey says wait until it is trendy again will this ever be trendy again you know it might there's all kinds of things that keep coming back and if it doesn't bother you then it's not a problem but if you don't like it you're probably never going to like it mm -hmm. so fix it and make it the way you want it to be stacy says turn it into a rock climbing wall <laughs> you could <laughs> you could put some handles on there it's a little tester rock <laughs> like it just you know um Climb uh, or burn. I think the other thing you could do is uh, get rid of all the uh, the nasty uh, white paint around it and put up some lovely Burt Reynolds paneling in the room. And it, that rather than have it be this eyesore in the room, make it feel at home again. Make it feel of the era that it came out of. No. <laughs> no. Help the fireplace go back to where it belongs. You know, the, the picture just focuses on the fireplace, so uh -huh. I don't think there's anything else that they want to deal with in that room. Yeah. It's just the fireplace that they aren't fans of. They probably got the paneling already out and yeah. done with, and now it's like, now what do we do with this thing that we can't just dis uh, unaffix from the wall? Disaffix? Disaffix. I'm inventing new words. Is that like crucifix? <laughs> <laughs> that we can just disaffix from the wall. So uh, I like to wait until it's trendy again. I, I give it a couple years. I, I'm really, I'm, I'm hoping some someday that the uh, the paneling does come back. Although it won't be loud in our house. Not the crappy paneling. The real wood the paneling, cool we would make, we would do something with that. That'd be neat. But not the like cardboard paneling. That's yeah, I know. Bad. Yeah. So there you go. That wraps up today's episode of Junkin' with Jenny. Do, uh, if you're ever in Michigan, like I said, check this guy out, Nathaniel, Nathaniel Rose, winemaker, and his winery. Um, as of this moment in time, uh, not a whole lot of shipping uh, due to laws, uh, but uh, two miles north of Sutton's Bay, which is north of uh, Traverse City on uh, M22, if you're up there. Beautiful part of the country if you have never been there. Definitely worth a summer trip. We, yes. did, we did a summer road trip up there last summer and uh, had a great time with the kids. And the kids were like, this is one of the best trips we've ever been on. And they've been <laughs> to Disney it. and everything, too. Um, so, so beautiful up there. I went there as a kid, and I decided at the same age as Libby, when I was around 11, I want to try living here someday. Mm -hmm. I mean, th that was how much it like affected me as a kid. Uh, and I did. I eventually did go and live there and realized winter was hell. But uh, summer was beautiful and wonderful. But it is a wonderful place to go and visit. So if you are up there, uh, go check out uh, Nathaniel Rowe's uh, wine and uh, all of his stuff. He's got some great stuff. And he sent us so many just stellar bottles um we are gonna look at a couple of more uh, on a future episode because he's doing world-class reds in michigan which is really kind of yeah that's unheard of yeah there. i mean usually you know every winery has a red that's good uh -huh. but he's like doing 
just mainly reds and and they're really really good they're they're competing with california reds uh in, in like the san francisco chronicle wine competitions and getting gold medals and so it's good stuff and we'll have that uh, on on another episode to check out so that wraps up today's episode of junking with jenny thank you everybody for watching thank you everybody uh for uh for chiming in stacy says my haunted cottage was in charlevoix so stacy knows what it's like up there thank you guys for watching and we'll see you again next time on junking with jenny